Welcome to the Eyes of Indigo with your infinitely curious hosts, Iris Carter and Margot Ross Sears. Our show is broadcast live at 9.30 p.m. Wednesdays. Socio-spiritual topics are laced with humor as we discuss weird stuff in a rational way. Learn more about us in our first episode, The Prequel. Shows are recorded and available on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, iTunes, and other aggregators. A keyword searchable index is at iriscarter.com slash EOI directory. Share ideas and comments in the program chat or by email. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share our show. Let us know you're here by typing your hello in the comments because we are thrilled to welcome you as we begin another adventure right now. Hello! Aloha! Aloha! <laughs> Namaste! Aloha! <laughs> Fun stuff. So, uh, if you're just tuning in, we've got our names up here so you can tell us apart, but I'm Iris. We got Margo. Dale Stacy is joining us from Earth Star Spiritual Center, and Katie Costa, our weather shaman, is joining us as well. So we appreciate y'all coming and being on the show tonight. This is going to be fun. Yes, it is. So um, I think bef- to let people know, I guess, what tonight's show is about, our intent is to uh, kind of talk about what happened at um, the Heal the Healer event that we had and to kind of review that and and talk about the experiences that each of us had. Um, if you're watching with us, we hope that you will um, uh, make comments and stuff so we know that you're out there. Ask questions. Yes, ask any questions that you have, or if you were with us, make your own comments as we go along. But before we get started on that, we were talking a little bit before the show about the upcoming eclipse, and would love to hear, uh, Dale, you were saying some really good stuff about it, and and Katie, any input that y'all have, tell us what's going on. (laughs) Go ahead, Katie, did you (laughs) Well, all I know is that eclipses bring about sudden rapid changes in our lives and it can be um, welcome change or unwelcome change. It's going to happen whether you like it or not, basically. And now is the time to really go within, look at yourself um, because the shadow parts will come up and it's time to integrate all that. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. And I was explaining how, uh, you know, this is going to be a big time for the energy to build up. Uh, from now until Monday. So it's kind of akin to when you're pushing water with a broom or a squeegee and you know how it kind of bubbles up. It makes this little wave right there at the edge of the broom, edge of the squeegee. So that's what's going to happen with a lots of folks. Uh, now uh, you got to make sure that your emotional sense is going to be in balance for you because if not, you're going to have this upheaval of this energy of emotional input. And then as the eclipse comes along, hopefully all that will be able to be cleared and blessed away. So with the eclipse, you know, you want to look at it dimensionally too. You know, from Earth, right, it's, it's the moon, the emotion that's blocking the light. But also from the sun, right, as the sun looks at the Earth, right, is the sun, the sun, from the sun view, it's the emotions that are being blocked to the Earth. So we have to look at it from both angles. So try to figure out where your emotional health and wellness is, uh, especially in a dimensional sense. And then that way you'll be able to find some sort of closure, some kind of clearing a blessing when it comes to you. Interesting. I mean, I just I, I you know, the celestial stuff, I just, I, I know like full moons and things like that, but I just never really, and I know the eclipses, people tend to go nuts, but I just figured it was just because people tend to go nuts over silly stuff. But, you know, as we grow spiritually, you start realizing those connections. But I just hadn't really thought about it. And I've been watching crazy stuff happen this week and just kind of going, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> as it goes by, and I'm going to stay out of it. You know? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> well, cool. Um, 
And Margo, you you were talking about the beach, and it's because I, mean, I think that that's kind of an impact on other stuff that you know how 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 the bad guys are toppling. Oh, no, <laughs> you're talking about the people at the beach, not the beach itself. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. When I, when you say the beach, I think the ground, the sand, the water, the waves. Yeah, because I because I've been doing beach weddings, so yeah, which I haven't done in four or five months because of winter time. So that's actually a big deal to me. Sorry, context. You're talking about the people. Yes, big changes are here um, at the local government. Um, apparently, shen, uh, some illegal shenanigans is being sniffed out. And it's in the news, it's in the mainstream news that the SBI, State Bureau of Investigations, is on the case Yeah. for specific coastal towns, which will remain nameless at this time, but I'm very familiar with them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and this is a first, and this is a first. I've been here roughly 14 years, maybe almost 15, and this is a first. And uh, it's um, and the names that are being called out. Some of them are not surprising, and others are. Others are. It makes you wonder who's blowing the whistle and who's actually turning state's evidence. And we will find out as we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we will find it. So that was unusual. That just started what yesterday, day before. Wow. Again, the last few couple of days. I understand that. Um, a comment I made right before the show, one of our friends pointed out that most, most, if not all, of the states that are under the eclipse path have all declared a state of emergency. Which makes you wonder, hmm, who has tipped them off with what information? Mm -hmm. Or what are they worried about? And then I've had heard other news that uh, NASA wants to shoot at or is planning to shoot at the eclipse or specifically shoot at the shadow not necessarily they're not calling it the moon and i find that tweak and wording very interesting what do they think the shadow really is and what are they shooting goodness <laughs> exactly it's, it's, it may not be bombs it may be something else entirely that they are launching at the moon. It, yeah, the it sounds like a kid standing in the backyard, like, you know, with airplanes flying over and, and like having a slingshot and pew, pew, I'm going to get you. you know? <laughs> it's like, exactly. Oh, it's like, you know? it's like, really? Is this the okay corral for shooting at the moon? This is kind of cool. There's country <laughs> songs about this as well, as well as a big band. <laughs> for centuries, we've been shooting at the moon. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of lunar related activity. Um, yeah, yeah, some good, good times and craziness. I feel like our Heal the Healer event hit at a great time right before the onslaught of this change and kerfuffle yes. started. Yes, yeah. it was a perfect divine timing. Especially yeah. with the, the equinox and everything, too, that, that nice balanced energy. Yeah, that was great. And that was something that kind of, I mean, we did it looking at calendars and when the place was available and when it, you know, the weather would be getting a little nicer. We didn't want to go in the dead of winter, of course. And, you know, it, but yet when we looked at it as we, the planning started fermenting, it was interesting because we started noticing, you know, like you say, the, the equinox, the, um, the eclipse coming, it was, um, you know, right before Easter, all this stuff that was just bam, bam, bam. And we were like, this Danger. is weird. Yeah. And, and we, but in a good way. And we talked about it in, in kicking off the event and, and telling people, you know, be fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Cause it was, it was fascinating and still is. So, so we've been back just a little over a week uh, it seems longer in a way i mean in He's some ways and shorter yeah yeah but um what 
what at this point is your takeaway from that weekend both y'all were presenters as well as participants what um share with us what comes to mind first off hey lena hi, hi lena. lena hey Hello. Hello. Namaste, you, sweet girl. <laughs> you are a beautiful yeah. soul by the way she is. She is. Yeah. I, I will tell you a takeaway from the Heal the Healer Summit. Uh, I thought it was a beautiful way to connect with like-minded souls uh, who are on a similar ascension journey. It was definitely a great way to connect with people from the heart. It was really wonderful to connect with people with like heart-centered awareness, uh, total ego deflation and just beautiful people coming together with a similar purpose and you know with it being by the ocean i know for me it brought up a lot of emotions and i know that water is the element that does that it can bring up the emotions you know and for me it's really helped me to heal some shadow aspects that i have been suppressing and holding down for years now and so it's brought up a lot of that but it, it was just, it was a beautiful experience. Uh, I loved being able to uh, go on the beach and do Qigong with Dale and listen to the beautiful presentations by Margo and Iris. And Amy's healing tent was off the chain. Yes. That healing tent with the cool beds and the crystal grids, it was just so relaxing. And Ooh, all the vendors had yeah. great stuff. And everybody, you know, was into the same weird stuff. You know, aliens, we got to talk about that. We got to talk about healing frequencies, crystals, and all that good stuff. So I'm really grateful to have connected with more like-minded people. It was great. I was going to show the healing bed real quick if I could. I thought I could get my fingers on it. I tried to organize the pictures before I started. Um, where is the healing tent? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Beamer Bed technology it uses uh, electromagnetism. There's a good picture of it on the inside. Yeah, this is on the yes. inside of the tent. She literally set a tent up in the room and had lights and crystal layouts and um, a Beamer Bed. <laughs> Two of them. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so, a chair and a bed. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was cool. Um, and I'm going to get back over to this other. And she donated that out of uh, goodness of her heart. Yes. Yeah. It was uh, awesome. Quite the treat. Yeah, yeah. it really was. It was awesome. It was like a, a dimensional space, you know, kind of every time I looked at it, it reminded me of that that mystical gypsy caravan that comes by, you know, trudging with the horses and then we open the doors. Come into my tent. Yeah, you go, yeah, you go into it. It's this dimensional space that goes on for all of eternity and just feels so wonderful in there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was. It, 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 that's an excellent analogy, Dale. It did feel very um, multidimensional and, yeah, going from one world into another. Mm -hmm. And, and I love all that. The, the mind, body, spirit things we did because, you know, a lot of times if you go to the classes, you may get these nice you know, mental pictures and things like that. But but to be able to get not only the mental knowledge and the stimulus there, but also to put that into practice or like physical things that we would do. I mean, everything from, you know, it's OK to talk about bending forks and spoons but to actually get to do that yes yes. yes and to see other people do that i mean it's wonderful and then i mean with all the energy healing and, and listening to all the little different the, the drumming and the crystal bowl from katie it's just, just a wonderful time for mind body spirit yeah yeah margo's got hers left from the, the event a couple of examples from yeah when the group did that yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And we did not take that from the dining hall to Trinity Center, Margo. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We contributed our, our own set our own uh metallic sacrifices here <laughs> for the cause. No yes, and also the drum circle around the fire at night. That was so cool. And I put together a little compilation of that. I put it on my YouTube channel. It sounds so awesome. It's like a definite open third eye. It's a third eye opener. Well, th speaking of that, um, I pulled up the video and I can share a, a little Do bit mind? of it. Um, 
let me wait a minute let me find it uh it's in it was in my because yeah, those pictures of the fire spirits when you were able to take a, a single picture and capture that fire energy and to see the little spirit people inside the fire that was yes. that was just magical especially margo when you put in the little color stuff and yes it was i know fire. that was so cool well this is a little bit of uh katie's video um Let's do Calling in the ancestors. <laughs> One, two, three, clap your hands, pow. Ready? One, two, three, pow. There we go. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. That beautiful blue fire. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. Very water-like, fire and water looking. fairy dust <laughs> little magic fire fairy dust fairy fire and real time the colors we were more is you know it's harder to see just a little bit of it here but it was really magnificent in person i think somewhere on this video you can see some of the healing tent as well as the event itself yeah but, uh, scrolling forward is a good idea yeah let me go through a little of that was good and then more interior shots there you go yeah this was us and these are still pictures that were together Here's Amy's tent. There's the front of it. And there, oh yeah, the crystal grids that she created. And paintings that Mary made with Katie. Yeah. And Katie! <laughs> Sound healy. Yes. You can hear it. You did a great job, Katie. That was wonderful. Oh, thank you. That was all divinely put together. <laughs> Love that picture. Yeah. 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 That's a good picture too. Lost in thought. The wizard is not chill now. <laughs> another wizard. And another and another. <laughs> And more. I no, was listening to the music is beautiful. Yeah. I kind of put you right back in that trance moment. Okay, so. Um, and I will put the uh, link up. Thank you. That, that yeah. you want to take a look at the whole thing themselves. Katie, I think somebody with the handle Little Debbie knows you in the comments. Oh, that's my mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> she says, hi, Katie. Hi, Kate. 
This is Mommy and Dad. She wrote oh, Mommy and Dad. You guys are here. Yeah. Hi, Mom. We love Katie. You did a great job. Aww. You have I a love lovely daughter. Too. Yeah. Oh, very sweet. And Danny wrote as well. Yes. Aww. He says, Aloha, beautiful light and love workers. Really enjoying the show. Wonderful experience with you all at the beach. Much love to you all. Oh, I love you, Danny. Yeah. Very sweet. Heidi uh, attended and says Amy's healing sanctuary was so incredible. And she's got little energy hands showing as well. And Lena, and Lena checked in with us at the beginning and says hello, too. And she attended as well. Yeah. And Kelly, you know, being with people who were already energy workers and energy healers so that when we did those energy exercises, it, it just like magnified the amount of energy we're able to feel, give, receive. So, yeah, that was wonderful. So that was one of the effects we were hoping to have is in by inviting healers, we could already start at the next level or even the next level above that. And, yeah, this group quickly, quickly went there. Um, what was it? The last night we all gathered in the main living room in a conversation pit with floor to ceiling windows all around us. And we talked about conspiracy and <laughs> ET and people told their stories of their encounters with ETs and Bigfoots and, <laughs> or big feet, whatever, or sas Sasquatches. Yeah. <laughs> and government stuff and former jobs and la 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 la. It was really really cool. It was another it was another fun gathering. Yeah, and, and it says it was a great event with lovely people. It went perfect for her. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it really, yeah, it really was like a cosmic reunion. You know, we <laughs> like we've all come here to Earth. We've done our little things and we're doing our little things. But we kind of came together for just four days. And we, you know, we kind of recharged and re-energized one another. And now we get to go back out to our post and continue our cosmic work. So it's just wonderful when so many like-hearted, like-souled people get together, uh, specifically to be together and just to be yeah. through Aloha yeah. consciousness, and then to be able to just take that back out to the world. Yes. Yeah, so, so thank you too for for making that happen, facilitating all that. I know that's not easy. It takes a lot of work. So thank you very much. Thank you. How's Jeannie holding up with the uh, rollout and aftermath? She was she was in there with us and doing her magic. It was awesome. Yeah, it worked out great. I mean, we you know, we uh, when we got back, it was like it started when we left the property. We, we met some people. And then when we got home. I mean, we were balls to the wall, as they say in the Air Force, with the, you know, that's when you push the, the gears to the wall, the little balls on top of the things, you push it. And because uh, we sure. had every day, <laughs> it was goodness. <laughs> well, okay, I guess we'll just keep riding this, this energy wave until it just peters out and we can get to shore sometimes. So, yeah, that was great. Everything yeah. wanted to happen as soon as you got home. Yeah. Yes. Is, yeah, it like, yeah. And it was nice. It's like they missed us. <laughs> so, yeah, we got to get caught back up. You know? Well, you know, it was funny because I came home and unloaded all my stuff in the house. And I got like my clothes unpacked and put in the laundry. And, you know, I put some things up, but I had two bags that I had stuff in that I didn't have to access right away. I just needed to go through and put where it belonged. I had those two bags sitting for a full week on my sofa. And it was just like, not today. I can't. Not today, yes. <laughs> I'm with you. We understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I still got a couple of boxes that I have not reopened. Just because when you do, <laughs> the energy comes flying out. Oh, Heidi, that gave me goosebumps. Heidi says, Dale, oh, my God, Cosmic Reunion. That should be the next uh, oh, retreat title. Sounds great. Yeah. Bada bang, bada boom. It yeah. writes itself, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to write Irish that. is going to take notes down. The cosmic <laughs> reunion. And I that like that. That all. is really catchy. Good job, Dale. Yes. I, I, you pitched it. Heidi caught it, and she's that's throwing it. it back in the ring, oh, and that's good. perfect. <laughs> all again. Do it all over again. Even better. Going in my folder. <laughs> For that. Yep. The official one. Absolutely. Good catch. Good catch, Heidi. That was awesome. Yeah, and that makes sense. Cosmic reunion because all light workers ultimately do know each other 
far beyond this lifetime, even if they haven't met in this lifetime. And in fact, we've met repeatedly because we are each other. <laughs> Continuously, we are one on multiple levels, actually, not just one. Uh, cosmic reunion, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. So, yeah, especially, you know, since all of us have obviously come here from the higher densities. I mean, uh, a lot of us are 4D, 5D, 6D, those densities, and we've come back to Earth this time to to work our magic and to help humanity. And also, of course, we grow in the exchange because that's the, the energy balance, you know, we, because all we're doing is we're just sharing love with one another. So we get to learn that from many, many different, uh, not only dimensions, but also the density levels. And it's great that every experience we have is now multiplied by all these wonderful spirits that came together. And so we get to just live on with their energy inside of us because, uh, you know, we're now we're part of one another again, consciously we've come back together. So, yeah. yeah. And I want to take a moment to thank Margo and Iris for putting this amazing heal the healer summit together. Thank you so much for all of your time, effort, work, resources that you put into it. It was wonderful. Yes. Thank you. That, I mean, that, that's really sweet. It was an honor. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing it, bringing that back around. That's it was both of us have done uh, public events before and we've done overnight events separately, you know, on different occasions uh, in years past. And mostly I, my experience, Iris, I don't know. I can't speak for you entirely, but for me, mostly it mostly went pretty smoothly. Yes. And it yes. showed up, a lot of stuff showed up in divine providence mm -hmm. over and over and over, uh, even down to the swag bags and door prizes that, that were giveaways. Cool stuff showed up even during the event. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just even down to that detail. But um, that was, that was wonderful. And the food was great. The food I was mean, awesome. It, Considering you know it's it was institutional food at a camp. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it they still did um, a a really a, a really good job with that, and they tr obviously tried hard to meet special diets as well. Yeah, I thought um, they did an excellent job with that, and it was three meals. It was a day and buffet style, and it was always hot and ready and on time. And you yeah, know. it was always on time. Yeah. Better than we were. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes spirit goes over five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. But uh, they did. Yeah. It was great. It was great. And, and was, thank you, Katie, for scoring the mango sorbet for us. That oh, you're great. welcome. That was awesome. Yeah. That was so good. Yeah. yeah tapping, they, in, tapping into the good stuff. For those that weren't aware, they discovered that that was one of the options. Like they would have desserts. And, and they would have like cake or pies or whatever. But for people who had special diets, they could go to a different, go to a window in the kitchen and they had options. And these little individual servings of mango sorbet were available. And so then everybody, anybody who was on a special <laughs> diet was like, go get me one, you know? <laughs> yeah. Dairy free. Yeah. People who wanted dairy free or, or gluten free as well. Yeah. It was awesome. It was very cute. And the environment there was gorgeous. The trees, um, the preservation, because it is a uh, conser uh, a nature conservatory. So all of the wildlife and the waterways can't be interfered with, except for by a major move by Congress kind of thing, kind of a kind of movement. And so the preservation, the trees there are very, very old, considering uh, the age of modern North Carolina. Now, obviously, trees in Europe are much, much older. Right. But um, but around here, trees that tall on the coast was very, very, very impressive and very unusual. It looks like Iris has a couple of pictures of the property on here as well. Yeah, that we oh, can well, that's probably. One, unfortunately, let's see. Whoopsie, go to the next one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to show um, some of the, I know some of these pictures are small. Sacred than... geometry was one of the topics that we explored. Oh, that exactly. was so cool. Yeah. And we, we had some beautiful pictures from that. And I was trying to see that's, there's the fire pictures. I can bring those up in a minute. But um, I was just going to try to find. 
Do you have the one with, there it is, the fire fairy. I think it was the last one. There it is, the very last fire picture, first in the row. Dale commented on that one, too. Guys, can you yeah. see the fire fairy at the top? Look at it. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's gorgeous I mean, photo. I mean, arms out, legs out, just jumping for joy. Yes. Yes. She'll and um, if we go back, there's some other, this looks like a, a bird. Uh -huh. Yep. Ooh, Flying. that would be a phoenix, a firebird. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a dragon there, and there's another little bird down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it's more of the colors. And this fire pit was right beside a beautiful bubbling pond. Yes. So we had trees, we had wind, we had fire, we had water, we had earth below us. It was really nice. Yes, had all the elements. It was great. Yeah. Ooh, like another bird. There was one that looked like a king or something with a crown. Was this the one? I think that's it. Is that yeah. him in the yeah. guys? It looks like we burned a tiny toy king at the end yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> his little man. A little burning man with his little banner fl flowing down from above him. Kind of, sort of. That is so cute. Yeah, you can see all kinds of cool scrying stories in those flames. But your sacred geometry, people came back with beautiful natural patterns uh, from the aquarium and in the trees. Yeah, that was a typical view of a small tree on the property. The trees were like live oaks. They were even bigger. But look yeah. at the pattern in that bark. That was gorgeous. Yeah. And then um, those were a couple of pictures I took. But here's the bubbling pond. They had, you know, like a little fountain in the middle of the pond. And I was blowing bubbles out on the porch. It was a little rainy. But that there's, you know, the views from the porch. And then some people went to the aquarium. And then some people got some other plants from around the area. But um, we had some Sacred cool. turtle back. Yeah. yeah. 13 scales. Scale pattern, the spiral, the golden ratio again and again. And, and Katie with her sacred music also doing golden ratio <laughs> with sound. Uh, talk about this, Dale. This was an interesting exercise. Oh, yeah. So this is a, a, called a, a spirit and energy web. So what this does is as you have a piece of yarn, it can be any color, and you would just throw it to someone across the other side of the circle. And then they, in turn, would throw it to someone else until eventually everyone had a piece of the yarn. And then they would throw it back to the very first person. So that means everybody is connected. And it's just a 3D representation just to show us how we're all connected with the energy. And then when everyone kind of pulls tight on the yarn, and remember, I was just plucking the strings like a guitar. So mm -hmm. everybody could feel yeah. the vibrations just from that one single piece of yarn because that's the way it is for us spiritually. Mm -hmm. We're all connected. Right? And it was, uh, one, it was a very cool demonstration. Yeah, there wonderful. you go. Yeah, finally. That's a typical giant tree that was there. Yeah. And that, yeah, and that was our view when we did uh, Chi Kung in the morning. Remember the rainy morning? We did Chi Kung mm -hmm. outside, so we got to see that. Yeah. This was the view out, yeah, out of yeah, the glass windows. Our, windows yeah it was great mm -hmm. and then we um, we had a circle there um let me go back. that was our little energy tube we used to show how we're all connected uh, electrically too. electrically yeah yes yes what was the name of that electric toy again uh, it's just called an energy device i think it says energy device on it yeah it, or energy toy. yeah i believe that's what it is we can probably find, find it. No worries. I just needed some keywords. Thank yes. you. <laughs> and they went to the beach the first morning. It wasn't raining and did Qigong out there. That's right. And we we're able to do Kalana Hula. So that's the Hawaiian Qigong. So that made it very nice. Uh, yeah. And people came back with some beautiful shells. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. We also did a sun blessing. We did a Hawaiian sun chant, sun blessing, welcome the sun. And also, we looked up in the sky to see the sun's chi. So that was something very nice to do. A little, mm. little flecks of light you can see when you defocus. And oh. that way, when you're doing like dolphin breathing or a whale breathing into the top of the head, you can just imagine yourself just breathing in those little photons, those little light cells from the sun. Wow. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. 
Oh, look at all the happy peoples. I know. Yes. On the beach with their little lace. That's so awesome. Yes, everybody got laid on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. That's it. <laughs> Flower hugs. Yes, I love that. And this was the picture of the last day. Oh, great group picture. Yeah. Tired, happy, serene. Yeah. And we worked on a puzzle and there was one piece missing. It was one of those we had it in a break break area and everybody kind of go play with it. And there was one piece missing. So then they colored a piece of paper to make up for the missing piece. <laughs> so that was fun. And this was a healing um, in the cool. sacred geometry. Yeah. Oh yeah, the geometry sacred geometry. And this was yep, chi can't bend their arm no matter what. Yeah, and then we were um, doing other things. I mean, there was a lot of hands-on, try this, do that type exercises. You know, it, you weren't just sitting and listening all day long. It was right. participatory. Yes. Yeah, because that's when we did the uh, little 3D images to help activate the third eye so that you could see with the internal eye when we do a meditations and and oh, here's the it's energy rod that's what it's called yeah. Even better. <laughs> nice. uh, you can get on amazon or probably get it i got this one at world market yeah yeah Excellent. yeah, yeah. I was market before thinking about getting one and then i decided not to and now i'm tempted to get one again because it is so much fun yeah because it's great for group work you know that way people can physically see how we're connected electrically so yeah it's very self becomes very self-evident yes it was brilliant, 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 brilliant stuff. Well, that was awesome. So at the end of the event, we basically asked everybody what was their takeaway? What did, you know, what was their, uh, what would they feel like sharing with other people eventually? So basically we're going to ask the same thing of the two of you, if you don't mind. In your memory, in your perspective, what was the takeaway or one or two events or something somebody said? What comes back to you? Katie, we'll start with you, if you don't mind. What would you what did you bring away still to this day, a week or so later? Hmm. Can you repeat the question one more time? What was your big takeaway or some of the more, more spectacular moments for you during this event that you're still, that are still burning in your memory now? The Reiki attunements that you gave, Margot, uh, were very intense. And so I'm still integrating that. And that was just amazing out of this world. Beautiful. Um, I've noticed my guinea pig. <laughs> has responded to me differently and she can definitely feel the increase in vibration for sure. And um, I've noticed that I've been more in tune with my body and more aware of what it needs and what's serving me and what's not. It's really like expanded my consciousness big time. So I'm really grateful for that. And when Iris was sharing about body language and gestures and, and how we communicate with our bodies uh, that really awakened me to um, be more aware <laughs> um, of how my body's talking versus how I'm talking. Cause sometimes my body language doesn't match what I'm saying. So learning to be more authentic with that and more aware of that. Uh, I thought that was very fascinating. And you know, what Dale uh, showed us with the web physically seeing the web and how we're all interconnected energetically. And it, I mean, just because we can't see energy doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We are energetically connected. We are electromagnetic beings. Telepathy is a real thing. If you randomly have someone cross your mind and see a vision of them, chances are they're thinking of you too. That's telepathy. You're energetically transmitting and receiving information constantly. It's just we've been conditioned to doubt this or to not understand this because, you know, we're not taught this in school. But 
crystals also can help amplify this telepathy, which is fascinating because especially quartz crystals, silicon dioxide, they're used in computers and everything. They enhance telecommunications and it's fascinating. So try sleeping with a crystal tonight under your pillow and see who comes into your dreams. <laughs> you know, it amazes me when you're, you're talking about that and how scientifically, you know, we're taught how, you know, energy never dies and how everything's made of energy and, you know, how energy is connected to us and all that stuff. But we're not taught the human connection of, of energy. And yet the very same people that will tout all the scientific proof are the same ones that will poo poo the woo woo. <laughs> yep. So it, and, and it's a technical so, way to describe it, yeah. Yeah, how they can how they can talk out of both sides of their mouths, literally, with you know, oh, it's true here, but no, it's not true there. But but if you follow the science, it has to be true. And it, yeah, so it absolutely, does. yes. It holds up. Lena brought it back a memory. She said she looked up the love tuner. <laughs> we have a 528 hertz whistle that Iris and Amy and I and Trisha, I guess we didn't know had one. The four of us had it in 528. Um, Dale, tell us a little more about what 528 hertz does and is meant for. Yeah, so it's a, it's a wonderful love uh, vibration, love rhythm. And if we just look at the numbers, you know, 528, uh, that adds up to 15. So, you know, we can look at that as either 15 or look at it as 6. But we also can look at it dimensionally that it's five, five, five. So that means that's unity, Christ consciousness. So when we play that 528 hertz, you're just going to feel this nice, soothing, unity, Christ consciousness that's flowing through your entire dimensional field. And that's why it was such a, a very soothing tone. You know, it was almost like a, a dimensional train was coming, you know, when you were blowing it, it would sound that way. Oh, it was, it was just wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. That, well, that was more than I remembered, yeah. and I appreciate that so yeah. much. Thank you. Katie, thank you for that wonderful recounting. That was beautiful. Thank yes, you. absolutely. Uh, you all have imprinted amazing things in my consciousness. I'm still integrating it all. <laughs> well, we'll help you more with that next year when we have our cosmic reunion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, uh, and the things that... Uh, that I thought were very special with me as I heard people integrating all the things that all of us were doing. Uh, one of them was when we did the, uh, remember we did the martial art technique with the unbendable arm <clears throat> and, and to know that you could stand there and within two minutes, uh, after showing you how to direct your energy, you really could keep me from bending your arm. It was like a, just a piece of steel, a beam of steel. And you know that if you can direct energy that way, that means you can influence and create any reality you want to do. You just got to know how and to have confidence to know that this energy is within you and you can direct it because this is waiting to be used. Uh, and the other one was, it was kind of humorous, uh, especially after we were cleaning up and things. And I, I, several people came by and said, Dale, I'm doing my 51% service. Because, you know, when we talked about that with the uh, and the sacred geometry part. and we Service to self versus service to others, right? Exactly. And, and the density levels and how we're able to make transition to the maybe not 4D or 5D. Uh, you know, the law of one says we have to be at least 51% service to other people. So it was wonderful that, that people were putting that into immediate action. They were opening <laughs> up their hearts and, uh, and they were being proactive. So, you know, they weren't, yet, they weren't waiting to be asked to do something they saw there was a need and they volunteered willingly to open up their hearts and, and ask to be of service. So it's always wonderful to see people to realize, yes, we can be of service uh, at the moment's notice. That's wonderful. I was going to say, you just brought back a memory for me that for during that time that I didn't have clarity about how to express it until listening to you just, just the second talk about the um, uh, not being able to bend these ladies arms right. exactly. <laughs> at the elbow this way. I mean, guys, it was 
Mark, yeah, black belt trying to bend your arm this way, and it was not happening. And he was you know, hanging, you know. <laughs> he was hanging, yeah, on 10 different people. Yes. And um, I, I participated in that. And what the clarity I just got was while that was going on, I mean, yeah, you, you, you did a great job prepping us up, shoot energy at the giant oak tree right outside the – beam the energy at the oak tree right outside the window – and just, just stay on that beam and I'm going to try to move your arm. The experience, the awareness I had in those several seconds of the beam at the tree and feeling you uh, pushing down on my arm. Well, yeah, normally you would feel that resistance and interaction, that energetic interaction. Mm -mm. It was really, really clear and very, very defined that I was in one dimension of awareness and you were in a totally different dimension of awareness. Yes, exactly. In that moment that I was, we were not in the same dimension at the same time no. for just those few seconds. And it was, wow. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a wonderful feel. And I wish people, <laughs> that was, I know. and it was easy and it was serene and it was natural and it was effortless. And I was, Looking back at it was surprising. Okay. Doing it was easy. It was a very natural shift in, in awareness to go into that state, you know, you know, float in and float out and float and in I, and float and out. I, and I wish people yeah, could have um, felt when I was doing it, if we had more time, we would have had other people do each other. But, you know, when I'm pulling down on your arm, the, the, elbow, the elbow joint. Right? What's your experience? Because uh, you would think, well, that's going to be like rock hard. No, I could feel your skin and it was soft. But it was a soft strength. It was like a soft oak tree, it, you know, because you could just feel all the muscles in the skin being so soft. And you would think, why does the arm not bend? What's it was? It's our life force. It's the energy that goes through. That's what keeps us going you know, through all of eternity. And it's just amazing that we can channel that energy just simply with a thought and intention, right? And it's just amazing to feel every time I do that. It's and, and what you focus on grows. Yes. Yes. And, and it's just, uh, you know, because, you know, when you do that for folks, I know that they're, they're thinking, well, wait, he's a man. He's got he's 170 some pounds and he's going to hang off my arm and I'm going to hold him up. So, you know, when you first do it, you feel the arm go down just a little, but it's like it only goes maybe an inch and it stops and you can see their faces change like, oh, my gosh. I'm able to do that. And then it really gets strong. And then there's no way you can bend that arm. It doesn't you. move at all past yeah. that point. But I, but I feel it's totally soft. It's just such an odd feeling, you know, for me. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I, what I'm hearing you say is you're very aware of the cellular construction of yeah. muscle and bone and tissue and fluid in that human arm. And that's totally not what's holding you up. Right. The energy flow instead yes, is what's exactly. holding you up. Yeah. At that point, that I didn't even thought, think about that. You experienced two different tactile yeah. experiences at the same time. That's brilliant. Yes. That's brilliant. You know, Thank you. That Thank I've, you for I've sharing that. To do, and I would love to get some people together to do this. And I wish I had thought about it over the weekend. When I was younger, we'd have slumber parties and stuff. And, and the big slumber party game was the same one that's in the movie, The Craft, where you got somebody that's laying on the floor and everybody goes around with two fingers and puts it under and it you light, know, as a feather. light as a feather, stiff as a board. And it worked. I mean, <laughs> we would, we would drop different ones would drop their hands or we'd go down to one finger. You know, we, we two or three of us just holding somebody up with one finger and it worked every time. And I know it has, it's the same type of thing, Yes, but you know, it, it, it's such a fun thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think I can get down on my knees and get up like I used to when I was 12 years old, but <laughs> would have to do it off of the Beamer healing beds instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't drop as far either if you didn't drop them, but um, I'd Let imagine people levitate. You're just, you're just telling yourself that you can do this. And, and then the person's like, you know, doesn't even realize they're up off the floor or whatever. So. Iris, what did you take away from the week? What was remarkable to you would probably be a, a better, more clear way to say it. What was remarkable for you? I think 
the biggest thing that after all was said and done, uh, if, first of all, going into the weekend, you know, there was, there was things like, well, I hope this works out or, you know, wish this could happen or that could happen. But then it was like, just go with the flow. It's, it's going to be fine. You know, I, I, I had that talk with myself and I heard the voices saying, you know, it's going to be fine. You know, so whatever happens, just go with it. And then it was like the weekend just took off and went by and everything fell into place. Everything, you know, people seemed happy and, and we stuck to us, uh, the schedule because it was already made out. and it, it gave equal time to all the different things that we wanted to experience. And, and we did have to do some flexibility with some of the schedule because of, of some inter something something somewhere but it wasn't a big deal I mean it was just it, it just was and after all was said and done we packed up and I got in the car it was like it hit me we did it <laughs> it was like wow <laughs> you know, that just happened, you know, <laughs> that was the, you know, it was, it was just, wow, that just happened. How did, you know, and, and, and not really questioning it and, and recognizing the part that we played in it, but it was like just being an instrument to make what was meant to happen, happen. And, and, and feeling so, blessed or thankful for the people that came and for the people that I met and the new relationships and the new experiences. It was just so it, it was, it was like an out of body experience. I mean, it, 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 it was like being somewhere completely off earth type thing it, and just you mean maybe cosmic yes <laughs> <laughs> it was and i mean and we had fun we laughed um i like what lena's saying she says uh, uh let god through yeah for sure and you know and we we had fun and like there was this ongoing joke that we had that everybody <laughs> You're not going to tell that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, God. this show you can do. Yeah, this show you can say that. Go ahead. Uh, it was funny. Well, it Backstory, was, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Amy, <laughs> Amy and I rode together and we were coming through uh, the highways and Amy's got a background in horticulture. And I and I was telling her that I knew that pear trees, the the Bradford pear trees that are all around town and everything, that they're invasive. And you know how who was the idiot that decided they would be good fillers for the medians and stuff like that. And and we were seeing them on the highway and stuff. And she was telling me some background about it and all that stuff. And she said, Yeah, they really are. She said, and they just proliferate. Multiple, yeah. Pro, pro, Pro proliferate whatever and just you know multiply oh, you know they take over and and so i saw a group of them and i went whore you know <laughs> talking about horse the the tree. Tree. Yeah, like, look at those horse over there you know and so we made a joke of it coming down the road every once in a while i'd see something i would yell whore and it scared her to death <laughs> <laughs> and we just made an ongoing joke well then we came into the meeting and the joke continued <laughs> we and when people were like, why are you calling me a whore? <laughs> Whenever it was appropriate, somebody would yell the word whore at someone else. And it was always comedic timing. Yeah. And it and, was and, funny as all get out. And we were yeah. coming home and some, I don't remember what was said. And we were going down the road and 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 it, I just saw an opportunity. And, and, I, and it had nothing to do with trees, but it was something else. And I said, well, you'd think it was a whore or something, you know, whatever. The, and she cracked up. She said, you know, every time I think that we have hit that joke to death and that it can't get funnier, it can't be funny again. It's got to die sometime. Something nope. else. Nope. <laughs> but the fact that everybody else embraced it and went with it as well, it just. 
It gave the word another power good. altogether. Yeah. 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 So, lots of good memories and just that feeling of immersiveness and just being. It was that's and that we did it. <laughs> Because a good Hawaiian word for that is ohana, and that just means family. So that's what it felt like. It truly was ohana and aloha. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you? Um, good Lord, if I had to pick, there was a bunch of ahas. Um, I had some really nice personal shifts and ahas that started the night before that Iris and Amy helped me process through. But as the we, days went on, it was cosmic. It was like being in another world because everyone around me was such a naturally high vibrating being that for the most part, communicating got easier and easier and was almost telepathic in some cases. And somebody would start laughing and I knew exactly what they were laughing about before, without them having to explain. Or somebody would get an aha, they'd have a mouthful of food and go, mm! and I knew what their epiphany was because I could hear it. And so could everybody else that was in proximity. We were noticing things, the connectedness. And then, of course, Dale brought out the uh, yarn web that gave it a 3D representation uh, as well, which, I, which was brilliant and timely as well. And the connections, though, Ah, there were so many types of connections, not just telepathic, not just energetic. Um, there were soul connections, I guess you could say. We knew each other. Uh, sometimes some of the people had met for the first time, but everybody felt like they were already cosmic family, that they already knew of each other as well. And... Um, it was fascinating to watch people's faces and energy light up when something really registered for them, such as the fire or the spoon bending or um, at the end when we did the panel discussion and you know, a little bit of Q&A with everybody. Um, the Reiki attunements mm -hmm. were fascinating to, to do as well. Um, that generated another connection. And... Oh, it was, it was the connections, the connections, because the connections themselves were empowering on another level. And it was fascinating. Fascinating. I, I think it shows everybody. how, like, if people, as people awaken, you know, because there were different, people were awake on different levels, you know, and it was not like we were all like these super high level guru type, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's on different levels, but yet we all came together and very quickly. And, and it shows me how as people awaken and how the world could be, you know, if we did this exponentially, you know, that, that if we can do it, why can't, 30 people do it. Why can't 60 people do it? Why can't 600 people do it? And we can. And that's that's what's so cool. And it's just as people awaken and come together and recognize their abilities and their connections, um, it just shows how the world has the divine right to be. The divine right to be divine yeah yeah and that that is just something to strive for you know <laughs> or, or no something I to reclaim, to, reclaim. Should, to reclaim or to to simply to simply be claim to simply be because which is what you said there. at first yeah. yeah which is the first thing you said yeah you had it right the first time <laughs> 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 But yeah, it was a wonderful experience, and and you know, Katie and, and Deb, we can't thank you enough for all that. And Jeannie too, and, and Amy, 
you. Yes, and Amy. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank and you so every much. everybody that was there just contributed so much. I mean, it, it truly it was, was beautiful. Yeah. And I hope that others will feel called to join again. I don't want anybody to feel like, well, I wasn't there the first time, so I don't know that I would feel part of the group the next time. That's not. It's always going to go wherever yeah. it needs to go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Wow. First timers are old timers. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It's just having a time <laughs> regardless. And we um, did a little, uh, at the end, we did a little bit of what topics do you want us to talk about next time? Yes. And people threw out brilliant ideas that were very doable. So we're very excited. And, and we have more ideas that we didn't use this time. Yes. Um, uh, speakers we might invite and so on. So there's always going to be fresh new material uh, for both newcomers and um, old friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Regulars. Yeah. 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 And Katie, uh, like Katie, once you buy that the crystal heart, that crystal bowl heart thing that I sent you, once you have that, you can bring that next time. That'd be great. Oh, you mean, yeah, the crystal heart. Yeah, yeah. that looked beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That looked gorgeous. I've never seen one of those before. That is one of the most beautiful instruments ever. Yeah, I could see you playing that. Yeah. Really? That'd be great. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to put it on a wish list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Well, guys, um, we're getting to the end. I want to show real quick uh, what we've got coming up later this month. We have... Uh, Next week, uh, listen up and tune in. We're talking hertz. We already talked a little bit about the the numbers. Music, and Dale sound talking. hertz. Yeah. Yes. So we're gonna we're gonna explore that a little more next week, and then the seventeenth we'll do our psychic readings, and on the twenty fourth, IBS, irritable bitch syndrome. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Excellent euphemism. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, you know, it's it's going to be looking at um, uh, how we handle ourselves and 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 handle issues and and conflict. And conflict, yes. Yeah. So, um, hope Every y'all time. join us for those upcoming programs. And uh, we dropped Katie. Didn't mean to. There, she's coming back. Um, yeah. She, She's back. She's our cosmic one. She's our cosmic wanderer. And there she is. I interdimensionally traveled to another place, but I'm back. Cosmic hummingbird. Yes. (laughs) We appreciate you making a landing one more time. And everybody that joined us, thank you so much. We appreciate you being here and hope that you'll come back next week. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Aloha. Thank you for joining the Eyes of Indigo with Iris Carter and Margot Ross Sears. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Music is Arcadia by Kevin McLeod. Find us at facebook.com slash eyesofindigo, on YouTube under at Iris Carter Enterprises, and on various podcast aggregators. Copyright 2023 by Iris Carter 